Today on Bridges, we will talk about healthy eating for the holidays and special occasions. I'm Monica Schmelter, and I'm glad that you could join us for Bridges today. For most of us, the holidays, special occasions, they wreak havoc on our diets, and uh, we're looking for healthier, uh, lower calorie options. So Susan Neal is going to help us with that today. She's written the Healthy Living Journal. It's actually a part of a series. Susan is an RN. She's got an MBA, and we've had you before on Bridges, so welcome back, Susan. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm delighted to be here, well, Monica. We're glad to have you. So <laughs> I want us to focus on, and I know that you have your own personal story of really coming to eat healthy and having that improve your health. You know, for most of us, holidays, special occasions, birthday, anniversary, whatever, uh, really there's just so many food options <laughs> and there's temptations all around. How do you help us, Susan, navigate through that? Well, if we're eating at a party, you know, some kind of event, uh, usually the nuts are great. You know, they're a high source of protein. Um, and then also the fresh fruit is excellent. Fresh vegetables, the dips of guacamole and hummus are really good. Uh, skip all the casseroles with all the <laughs> gravies and sauces. And you don't know what, what exactly is in it. And, mm -hmm. and then the meats are, you know, usually wonderful. So if you go with the fresh, raw fruits, vegetables, a plain kind of vegetables, uh, meats, and avoid things that have the sugar and the wheat, mm -hmm. which are addictive and make you crave more, then, then you can navigate uh, you know, those uh, holiday parties and uh, eat healthy. Mm -hmm. And you said that and it sounded like so easy and like such a good thing to do, but it's hard. Like, do you have any tips or tricks for people who might you know, want to do like the gravies and those things. How did you make those changes in your life? Well, I made those changes because um, <clears throat> I, I had to. I got very sick. Mm -hmm. And so I, I had to make those changes for my health to, to recover and, and get better. And, and many people need to, mm -hmm. you know. Half of Americans have a chronic illness, which is just so sad. And, and, and that's my mission is to help people to improve their health. So. Um, an, an example might be to go ahead and eat before you go. Mm -hmm. Eat something healthy before you go. And then just have a little sample of the different things that might be. Just have some fruit that's there. You know, a lot of times they have delicious fruit trays and you eat know, fruit as a dessert. And it tastes good. And what I always try to tell myself is that I'm going to feel better later if I go with the fruit. Because typically when I make other choices, not only do I not feel as well physically, there's a lot of guilt that goes with that and a lot of concern of I'm going to gain weight over the holidays. And you mentioned health issues. I've talked to so many people who struggle with like uh, blood pressure, high cholesterol, all of those issues. And those many times are tied to our diets. And we have these wonderful holiday parties or special occasions and sometimes all of the options, there are healthy options, we just don't see those quite as quickly. Right, and, and you see the fruit is God's food. Mm -hmm. That is the desserts that he gave us. Oh, and they're just wonderful. Um, I, my friend I'm staying with, she had a, just a basket of pears that was sent to her for the holidays. And, it, oh, they're just delicious. Mm -hmm. So, you know, eat God's foods. Yeah. How about in terms of, and you mentioned, and I, I really do like that idea of actually eating before you go. One thing that I really find that helps me navigate through all of that temptation is that if I'm already full, like if I don't let myself get too hungry, I'm less likely to make the wrong choice. Yes. You know, and sometimes that is drinking a glass of water before you eat or, you know, eating uh, fruit or something before you go to the party. And then if you're not, because I find that I get into trouble if I use that thinking of, well, I just won't eat anything all day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you kind of know what happens when we make that choice. 
What about when you were talking about fruits and, you know, a lot of times there'll be fresh veggie trays and things like that at holiday parties. Do those items help us stay, for example, maybe more full than other items or how does that part of it work? Absolutely, because think of, uh, okay, the vegetables, they have fiber. So when you eat them, I mean, it ends up being a large bulk of food in your stomach. Now think of eating potato chips mm -hmm. and you just think of crunching the bag of whole bag of potato chips. It, it has no fiber. Mm -hmm. And so it ends up being a very small quantity so in your stomach and you're still hungry right. and you're eating and mm -hmm. you're eating more <laughs> <laughs> because you can't fill up. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So the fruits and vegetables have the fiber and God gave us the fiber. Right because he intends for us to be able to enjoy life and be full, Yes. right? Yes. And I think that that can be a mistake and that's a lesson that I learned because years ago, I didn't eat very many vegetables or fruits. I mostly ate processed foods, but I was hungry all the time and I never put that together that when I do better in my eating and I eat more vegetables and fruits that I actually stay fuller longer and I didn't really realize that that was due to fiber but you know you know those things so right right <laughs> what else can people do to make a special occasion or a holiday actually a real holiday or special occasion without gaining weight or feeling physically bad after eating it well, what you can do is uh, drink two glasses of water before you're going because then a lot of times we want to eat more because we're thirsty. Absolutely. Get a smaller plate, have put a smaller quantity of food. Just say, I am going to eat less food this time. Mm -hmm. And then once you sit down and eat after you have uh, selected your you know, delicious, healthy foods, eat and then wait before going back for seconds. Mm. Say, I am going to let my brain, you know, catch yep. up with my stomach so that um, we uh, understand. It's like, okay, I'm full down here, but it takes a little bit yes, of time to register mm -hmm. up here in our brains. Mm -hmm. So give yourselves five to 10 minutes and then that full feeling will arrive mm -hmm. and then you don't overeat. Yeah. And, you know, I love what you said because that really works about taking a smaller plate and putting smaller portions. And I remember when I first went through my weight loss journey, I went to uh, a special occasion where they didn't, they didn't have smaller size plates. And I thought, okay, so what do I do? So I made the decision, Susan, when I picked up the plate to physically mark it off of where I would put the food and where I wouldn't <laughs> and what I was going to do. But really... As silly as that might sound, that mental prep of this is what I'm going to do. This is, I'm going to get, take the smaller plate or I'm going, if there's only a large plate, take that. And in my head, I just marked it off and I'm like, no food is going to go to this edge or that edge. I'm going to put this just in the middle like it was a smaller plate mm -hmm. and I'm going to stick with that. Mm -hmm. And I walked through that and that was a way for me to help navigate and to build confidence that I could do that because a lot of people might look at you and say, but you know, she's really into nutrition. She's a registered nurse. That's easy for her. But really, we all have to learn, don't we, these healthier habits? Yes, and we all have to fight the food temptation, <laughs> absolutely. And another, another good tip mm -hmm. is when you're at a restaurant and you've just got this huge portion of food is to say, uh, to you know, to mark it off. Okay, I'm only going to eat this this much. I mean, you could even ask for the to-go plate ahead of time mm -hmm. and say, I'm going to put this over here and I'm going to take this home. This will be my lunch tomorrow, and mm -hmm. then I'm only eating this amount. And make that conscious choice even before you begin eating. Yeah, and I think that that's a way. I know that that's something that really helps me if I make the decision beforehand. It's like I'm going into this holiday party or this wedding or this special event and this is what I'm going to do <laughs> and I kind of scan the table and I look for the foods that God made and I go for those first because again that helps us get full and then I also try to um, focus on talking to people and enjoying their company rather than thinking about let's go get more good food. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> You're there to socialize and see everyone and that's more important. Yeah. So 
What do the statistics show? Because we touched on this a little bit, and I know that you said there came a time in your life where you really got sick and you knew, gosh, I have to change my eating habits. How many people or what percentage of people in America are struggling with health issues that might be related to nutrition? It's 50% have a chronic illness mm -hmm. and usually chronic diseases are related to uh, more lifestyle, like exercise and diet. And then 40% are obese. Mm -hmm. And that just, you know, it just hurts my heart. Yes. Yeah. And those are things that are, you know, not only is a person sick, but life expectancy, all of those things are affected by those. Would you say for someone, would a holiday or a special occasion be a good time to start a healthy eating plan? Or what about the thought, I'll just wait till the first of the year? Well, I think that if you navigate, you can you can do it during the holidays. Mm -hmm. You can even even when you're cooking at home. Instead of making that green bean casserole with uh, you know <laughs> all the mushroom soup and everything in it that has all, mm -hmm. just make sautéed uh, you know green beans with slivered almonds and garlic, and that is just so delicious and so much healthier. Mm -hmm. So y you can make. Uh, dishes that are healthy. Have a fresh salad. I love during the um, the seasons to go ahead and make my food based upon what's ripe. And uh, mm. right now, what's ripe is pomegranates and, and nuts, pecans, and so I'll make a broccoli salad with the sunflower seeds and a few raisins and pecans and pomegranate. Adding the beautiful bursts of Absolutely. red pomegranate. Yes. So you got the red and mm -hmm. the green. Or I might make a spinach salad that has uh, shavings of butternut squash, raw butternut squash, because butternut squash is also, it's, it's you know, ripe in the winter. Put some pomegranate in there, slivered almonds, maybe oranges, because oranges are ripe now. Mm -hmm. I mean, these things are delicious. And they make our food look good, so we want to eat it. <laughs> we want to eat it. We've got to take a break. We want you to stay with us when we come back. We're going to continue talk, to talk about how to navigate and make healthy eating choices during holidays and special occasions. For more information on a guest, visit our website, ctntv.org. Join the Bridges community on Facebook. Visit Facebook and search for Bridges with Monica. We would love to connect with you. Don't miss another episode of Bridges. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today where you can find all of Monica's latest teachings and interviews. It's easy to do. Just visit youtube.com, search Monica Schmelter and click subscribe. Once you are subscribed, click the bell icon to get notified when a new episode is available to view. Thanks for watching Bridges. If you are just joining us today on Bridges, we are talking about navigating through holidays and special occasions and still making really healthy eating choices. And Susan Neal has been my guest before, and she wrote this book, Healthy Living Journal. Actually, it's a part of a series. She's a registered nurse, she's got an MBA, and she has her own personal story and experience um, with making better, healthy choices that helped her improve her health. And, you know, Susan, we've been talking about all the things that happen, like at parties and special occasions, and all the foods being out there, and. So many times, the sweets and the desserts and all of that, they just look so inviting. And you were sharing with me a scripture that kind of encouraged you in a unique sort of way. Tell yes. us about that. It's Proverbs 23, mm -hmm. 1 and 3. And it says that when you go to sit down and dine with a ruler, beware of the foods before you and do not crave those foods because they are deceptive. Hmm. So they're deceptive in that, oh, they look delicious, they are delicious, they're so tantalizing, but they're harmful. Mm. They harm our bodies. Mm. So beware of them. So that biblical wisdom can be used today, absolutely. And I, you know, I hadn't really thought, to be honest with you, about that verse before in that way, that that's what they, what, that that's 
what that meant. But I can tell you this of something that I learned when I went on a weight loss journey several years ago. And uh, I know you won't like this choice that I used to make, but talk about deception. I really believed that Coca-Cola was just the best soft drink ever. So did I. <laughs> <laughs> and I also attached this thought to it that when, after I drank it, that it gave me more energy and that I felt better because people used to question me a lot because I probably drank, you know, those 20 ounce Cokes. I drank at least six of those a day. Oh my. I know. I See, I'm an one. overachiever. You drank one. <laughs> I'm an overachiever over here. I had one for breakfast. I would usually have mid-morning, okay, but, but I did it all throughout the day. When people say, when they would say, Monica, that's too much Coke, I'd say, oh, I have so much energy. But that's all deception. Like, that really wasn't what was going on. Really what was happening is in between the Cokes, like I'd get a headache and I'd feel weird, so I'd drink another one to mask that. And it was hard when I first gave that up. Like, I, I didn't feel as well. But I can tell you this, I have lots more energy now that I don't drink Coke. So I'm just sharing that because I really was deceived into thinking that that was making <laughs> me have more energy. And I think when you look at desserts, they, they look really appealing and inviting. Yes, yes. And let me tell you what the sugar does. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your, your glycemic index goes up, the sugar goes up, and then it bottoms out and you just feel tired. You don't feel like doing anything. Mm -hmm. So you'd need another one and bring that sugar up and then you would bottom out. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you what happens when you bottom out, okay, is your body has to get going again. So it releases epinephrine or adrenaline, you know, the fight or mm -hmm. flight syndrome. So we gotta, and then when you release that adrenaline, it causes anxiety. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, could that be why so many people are having anxiety today? Because that it goes up and then it goes down and you've got to uh, do something to counteract it and so your body does. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm so, I know that, that you're a registered nurse and that you have a background in nutrition, so I don't know that piece of the puzzle in terms of the science of it. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you as an individual person that Definitely, drinking all of that Coke and the massive amounts of sweets that I ate definitely caused my energy to go up. I, I would have that bottoming out and that definitely affected my emotions and how I felt. Yes. And when I look back to that period in my life, I think that there were probably a lot of times that I did have anxiety or that I got upset with people. I was easily irritated and that part of that was a physical problem that I was having because of what I was doing to my body, but like, I just didn't know that and I don't think most people know it. No, they don't. They don't relate that your irritability, your mood, your anxiety, mm -hmm. that this is related to what you consume, what you ingest. Right. And in, in my book, Healthy Living Journal, mm -hmm. what I do is I have people write down and chart what they eat and then I go to a mood chart. Okay, how is your mood? Are you in a bad mood? Are you anxious? Mm -hmm. You know, do you, are you irritable? Are you, you know, snappy? We go through a whole <laughs> mood chart to determine what foods exactly are causing the emotional, mm -hmm. you know, turmoil mm -hmm. in your life. Could it be related? And it's, it's like figuring out a puzzle to figure this out in reference to food. So I created that book to help people figure this out and understand, wow, when I ate this, this happened. Mm -hmm. And I don't want those mood swings. Mm -hmm. My family doesn't deserve this. No, no. And I will say this, I wish I would have had the Healthy Living Journal <laughs> when I was going through the weight loss journey. I, I did not have that. It was just something that I noticed over time. Mm -hmm. And not only did my family not deserve the moods and the, the anxiety and all of that, I had a lot of guilt and shame about those emotions oh, because yes. I would pray and I would say, God, help me not be that way. 
and it wasn't like it was completely out of my control. So I'm not gonna, it wasn't that. I just didn't realize the connection between the foods that I ate and how I felt. And so then I think, okay, fast forward that into now as we talk about holiday meals and as we talk about special occasions that we come to these parties and with all of these expectations to celebrate the birth of Christ, to visit with family, with friends, to celebrate a wedding, a birthday party. And we've got all of that and now we're taking in all of these things that aren't good for us. It's like there has to be a better way to live and that's why you wrote the Healthy Living Journal, but a, a better way to make these connections. So you're saying in the book you've got that where people can chart that out. Yes, absolutely. Yes, you can. And so then you can figure that out. Mm -hmm. You can, yes. And get over it. Yes. So if somebody decided like right now today, Susan, that <clears throat> gosh, I just maybe that is why I'm anxious or I'm bottoming out or pe people talk about it in the afternoon or after they eat lunch they need to go take a nap. Like mm -hmm. people joke about that, you know, because they're just so tired because their body's trying to process that food. If someone went out and let's say got the Healthy Living Journal today, made this decision they want to eat better, how long would it take before we would start to see an improvement? One week. One week. One week. You will see <laughs> Really? Sometimes three days. Mm -hmm. Sometimes three days. So, you, you know, you're going to have the foggy brain. And, and, and I recommend making, if you're working, making a change like on a Wednesday and start, you know, improving your diet. And then by the beginning of the next week, your foggy brain is gone, your headaches are gone, your joint pain starts to subside. And, mm -hmm. and yes, you see a, a change within a week. Now that's amazing. I would have thought that it would take much longer than that. Yeah, no, um, I've included six weeks of daily like habit changes mm -hmm. in knowledge uh, to um, make a habit change, mm -hmm. okay? Because you want this to stick. You want your lifestyle change to be your whole life. Right. Because God made your bodies and you want them to carry you through this life gracefully mm -hmm. all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. So, and, and to do that, we've got to take care of our temple and to make lifestyle changes. We need, this is for six weeks to hold your hand and carry you through this on a daily basis so that it sticks and stays. Yeah. Well, because we want it to stick and stay. And you know, I heard sometimes when we talk about healthy living and that that's a lifestyle, it's no different than anything else, right? Anything else that we do, we brush our teeth, hopefully several times a day and shower and do personal hygiene and grooming every day. So eating has to be the same way, whether it's a special occasion or you know, I'm, I'm back to work Monday or whatever it is, when we put it in that kind of a scope, I think that that helps us. It's not like this is one more thing we have to do, live healthy. This is, we get to do this and it provides us the fuel to do everything else. Right, and you see God made our bodies to heal. Yeah. Just like with a cut. So if we exercise and we give our bodies the foods that God mm -hmm. gave us, mm -hmm symptoms start to go away and we start to become healed because God wants us to live yes, an does. abundant life. He does. An abundant life. He does. And so it's our responsibility to try and take care of our bodies mm -hmm. and to be aware and don't crave those foods because <laughs> they're deceptive. Yes. And you know, some of us, we're not going to holiday parties, but we're hosting them. And I've heard people say, well, you know, people don't want all my healthy foods and whatever, and we've got just about a minute or so left, but what are some tips if I'm hosting the holiday meal and I want to cook and, you know, cook more healthy options, what are some tips that you could give us for that? Well, I'd cook, a, you know, a delicious meat, whether it's a turkey or prime rib, mm -hmm. and then the vegetables I would make healthy. So, you know, just uh, lightly, um, like asparagus that's mm -hmm. been lightly baked. It's still crunchy. Yeah. Do your um, slivered green beans um, and slivered almonds on top. So green beans and slivered almonds. And do your wonderful salad with the pretty pomegranates in there. And then if do some sort of a fruit, a delicious fruit for dessert. Or if you're going to make a dessert and you want 
then use coconut flour and almond flour, which are much healthier than wheat flour. And I'm sure you've got some of these tips in the book. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the book is Healthy Living Journal. So these are some great tips. I want to thank you so much for coming and for sharing today, Susan. It's been so good to talk with you. Thank you so much, Monica, for having me. It's been good. Thank you. Stay tuned. Monica will be right back with closing comments. For more information on a guest, visit our website, ctntv.org. Log on to www.ctntv.org, where you can make a prayer request, view our program guide, see who's on bridges, or even watch one of Monica's latest teachings. Log on to www.ctntv.org. When I truly turned my heart to the Lord, He took every sin I ever did away from me. God really is your other half. God, yeah. He's the only person who can really, you know, fill those holes and cracks in your heart that you're so wanting someone to fill. It's no good to have a big dream if you're not putting yourself in motion to yeah. go after that. Prayer changes things. If you need prayer, call 615-754-0039 or email prayer at ctntv.org. Today on Bridges, we talked about healthy living and how to really make the best food and eating choices that we possibly can. And I think what is important for most of us to realize is that what we can do is the best we can do and to start where we are. We live in a culture that is so busy and that the foods that are most readily available are really processed foods. And sometimes that's our only choice. We do the best we can when we can. And we trust God with the rest. I know that in my own journey of losing weight and doing the best that I can to eat in a healthy way, I don't get it right. 100% of the time. But what do I do? I do the best I can, and when I mess up, I just start over again and try to do the best I can in terms of working out and getting all different kinds of exercise as I can. You know, we can all live in a world of guilt and shame about our food choices or not working out, but probably none of us are gonna get to a place that we think is 100% perfect. But I think again, start where we are, do the best we can. When we mess up, to start over again, to ask God for his help. There are so many healthy choices that we can make that will improve how we feel. Uh, they may improve chronic illness, uh, but in all situations that we trust God and that we do our best because he loves us and wants us to enjoy a healthy life. We're out of time, we've gotta go, but we say goodbye and God bless you. <laughs>